Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and you're watching The Best JS. In this video series, we're going over the challenges with the Learn You Node modules. There are some command line tools from Node School, and it's pretty cool stuff. Okay, so it's a, it's a new day. Uh, that means a new shirt. Uh, the last video, um, it was quite late in the night when I made that one, so uh, I needed to hit the sack and go to sleep. But now it's a new day, and uh, I'm ready to uh, keep coding with you, learning all about Node.js. So let's go to our command line, and we're right here juggling a sink. So um, as always, uh, pause the video, uh, take it the time to really understand the challenge and read the hints, and uh, I mean, go to the documentation at nodejs.org and, and read, um, you know, all the hints and like just go deep into it. And then when you feel like you're ready, come back over here, and then we will code together. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead to my terminal. We're going to do the ninth challenge, juggling async. Create my new file here. 09 juggling async.js. All right, and it's going to be very similar to the previous challenge according to the uh, directions. Uh, instead, we have three URLs that we need to fetch instead of uh, just the one. So let's go ahead and require in a couple of things that we are going to need in order uh, to make this challenge work. I know right away, since we're making Git requests, we need the core HTTP module. So let's require that one in. And um, uh, you know, to, to log out the, the response to the uh, console, that's really easy. Uh, I don't need anything other than uh, HTTP to do that. Uh, but I don't want to, you know, use all the event listeners and do like uh, on start and or on data and on end. Uh, so I'm just going to use pipes to take care of my uh, response from the server. So const bl. And this is going to handle some stuff for me. Okay, so we got three URLs instead of the one. So const URLs. This is going to be an array. And I'm just going to use some good old-fashioned uh, JavaScript. So process argv slice two. So uh, we have three of them, and uh, they are... Um, uh, I mean, how we access that, like the second, uh, third, and fourth uh, elements in an array, we can use the slice method, and then we cut off the first two arguments. So nothing too crazy right there. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, uh, this is, you know, quite easy to do. Um, you know, if we go back to the last challenge, this is how we used pipes and the uh, git method in order to uh, get a response from a URL. So you might be thinking, all right, let's, um, let's do that. Um, I'm just copying and pasting just to save some time. And uh, we don't need the length for this challenge. And uh, everything else looks good. Now you might be thinking, okay, we we've got we've got three URLs, so let's let's just do this, and we just change the index number for each one. So there we go, our three URLs, and um, and and that's uh, the response for a program. Well, that's I mean that's clever. But a couple of things. One, we are like not keeping our code very dry. This looks like you know a lot of repetition. We're only changing in the uh, index number uh, of our of our argument, but everything else is still the same. And, and number two, it's just not going to work as expected. So if we save this file, and if we go to our terminal, and if we run the learn you node run and what is it 09 juggling async okay we get our code all right it looks like we're getting a response but let's verify that it is in the correct order you see it's not our uh, our code failed right here and we can run it again so let's run it again and now it's it's not it's not coming out in the same order as we want. You see, we're getting our text, but the actual and expected test, you can see they're all in different orders. So because uh, these are like asynchronous methods right here, like this line of code is going to run. It's going to take some amount of time from the server to respond with something. And while we're waiting for that response, then this line is going to 
execute and it's going to wait for a response and while we're waiting then this line of code is going to run and then whichever uh, one of these uh, responds first it's going to log that to the console um, in the order of the responses when they come in but according to the directions for this challenge we need to display this one first and then this second one, and then this third one, um, and not like in the order that they come back. So you might be thinking, okay, well, uh, that's not too bad. Uh, how about we use an array method like for each? Uh, that'll make our code dry, and then it'll it'll work. It'll solve that problem. Okay, let's try that. So URLs dot for each. Okay, we're gonna have one URL. That's gonna take a callback function, and essentially. We're just going to do the same thing. We're just going to change that to URL. Okay, we got a response. We're just piping it to that BL right here. Error handling, and then we're making it into a string and then logging it out. So that's dry. That looks good. Let's go back. Let's run it first. Let's just make sure that it's uh, running as expected. Okay, that looks nice. Now let's verify that. Okay, it's still working, but it's not working as expected. Again, we're we're running into the same problem as before, where um, we're we're you know putting all these like functions on the stack, and uh, they're not going to resolve or do anything until the response from the server comes back. So this is essentially a drier and a shortened version of, of what we had. Uh, earlier so that is essentially that for each this is a, a shorthand version of this it's still not going to work the way that we want it so i mean one way that you can get around is just to uh, put each of the like http requests inside of the callback of the previous one so that's that's certainly possible so if we if we do one okay and i'm just copying and pasting from the previous one and and i remove the length of the string because we don't need that so here's the first one urls index zero and then inside of my callback i put another one and make sure i change the index number and then finally inside of that one I put the last one, change the index number. Okay, so that looks crazy. Let's just save it. Let's run it first. Okay, it works. Let's verify it. Okay, crazy. Now it works, and our solution is quite different from the official solution. You can take a look at it later. But there it is. Now, this is an example of something called callback hell. Uh, this is not good code. Um, I mean, it works. We are logging to the console the server responses in the order uh, they appear in the uh, command line arguments, but we're repeating ourselves a whole bunch. And, uh, and, and also, it's just very hard to follow like what's going on here because we have a callback function inside of a callback function and that callback function is inside of another callback function i mean it's like really hard to follow you can see all of these like nested bracket parentheses right here it looks like a mess uh, so there's definitely a way to clean this up uh, i mean you could you could space it out a little bit and okay here's Here's the innermost callback method inside of this callback method, or this one rather, and that's inside of this one, but it doesn't solve our, our repetition problem and it's still quite messy. Um, and, and what if your application requires like uh, not like three requests, but what about 10 requests? And are you really going to you know nest 10 callback functions, go 10 levels deep? I mean, that would be really, really difficult to <laughs> to follow along with and not a good practice. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to leave this example here only to show you an, uh, like a bad example of how to juggle multiple async uh, operations. So a bad example also known as callback hell okay and we're gonna go ahead and uh, import a library called the async library if you uh, 
you know, might remember from the instructions on the command line, it, it asked us not to solve the problem with um, with any you know third-party libraries like async or after. But uh, but those are like professional tools. They're used by pros. I, I use them at my job like all of the time. So I definitely want to like you know introduce you to that and show you one of the async methods from those libraries that will make your life like so much easier when it comes to juggling like async problems. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, comment all of that out since we I don't want to run it. And we need to install a new NPM module into our code. So let's go to our terminal. Um, let's just clear all of that out. And uh, I've already installed it, so if you haven't done it, uh, don't worry about it. But just npm install and write async, okay? And that will install the npm module to this directory. Make sure that you're in your project directory. So if we do a pwd, yeah, I'm in my project directory, which is where I want. But one more time, that's npm install async. And I've already installed it, so I'm not going to reinstall it. But um, you shouldn't get any errors. It's pretty straightforward. OK. And now let's require that async module. OK, so const async require async. OK, perfect. All right. And uh, if you go to their uh, you know, docu documentation on the web. It's like really good. They have like tons of awesome methods that like uh, help you, you know, work with uh, multiple asynchronous functions. But the one that we, you know, uh, are really interested in is over here in this collections category. So we do, uh, if we go back to our, our code, we do have an array of uh, URLs that we need to fetch. So an array is a type of collection. There's a, an array and there's an object. There are both collections. So these methods in the documentation under collections, that means for arrays and objects. Perfect, exactly what we need. And you can just take a look at the list right here, and you might be thinking, oh, it's it's probably something like each, or, or maybe uh, one of these other uh, one, like every, or you know something like that. They, they seem like um, you know, like their Lodash or, you know, just native JavaScript array methods. Um, now, each is what I thought I could use, like, initially. But the thing is, uh, if you read right here, the iterate E is called with an item from the list. So the iterate E will be the uh, array, and the item is the current item. And a callback for when it has finished. So just like for each or map, uh, in like in regular JavaScript. Uh, now, this is very important. Note that since this a function applies uh, the iterate to each item in parallel, there is no guarantee that the iterate functions will complete in order. So you can use this one, but it would just be the same as using a for each. We cannot guarantee that we can um, have these functions complete in order, which is not exactly what we want. We want them to complete in order. So there's another method. I had to like dig around a little bit and find the one uh, for this particular problem, but it's just a, a few ones below. It's called e each series. And uh, when I saw this, I danced in my chair. Look at it. The same as each, but runs only a single async operation at a time. Perfect. So that's what we need. It's a method called each series. We're going to put our array right there. And then uh, we are going to put our uh, callback function um, right here. Um, the, the callback function is the iterate, uh, iterate T. And I'm sorry, earlier I said this was the, um, was the array. No, the array is going to be the first argument. And then our callback function, um, it, this is also a callback. But uh, there's an optional second callback that you can add towards the end. So enough talking. Let's just go ahead and put the code down in the editor. So I'm going to run async uh, dot each series. There we go. I'm going to put in my URL array. So URLs, and then I am going to put in um, my uh, two arguments for this kind of callback function right here. Uh, the first argument is going to be the current item in the URL 
uh, um, array. So I'll just call it URL. And then the second item is going to be that optional callback. Um, and we can put that optional callback uh, right here um, after uh, this argument. So here is our collections. This callback function, the first one, that is the iterate uh, if we're following the uh, documentation right here. And then if I want to, I can put like an optional callback, like final uh, callback function right here. But we don't necessarily have to do, do that. Okay, so again, I'm just going to copy and paste from the previous one. Just change it up a little bit. So the current URL is, um, is what we're going to fetch. So I'm just going to put it like that. Okay, perfect. We get a response. We're going to pipe it. We're doing some error handling. Perfect. That looks good. We're going to make this into a string and then log it uh, to the console. All right, perfect. Uh, now there's a couple of things that I'm going to uh, change. I'm going to change this error handling right here. We could log it to the console uh, or I could pass any errors that happen in my function uh, to the uh, async callback. So instead of uh, passing it here, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to write return callback error. All right, perfect. And um, you know, we need to let async know when we're finished with this function and when to call the next element in our collection, in our array. So then we just call the callback just like that. Now, this will work, okay? Um, I hope it works. <laughs> Let's just run it first. Learn your node, run 09 juggling async. Okay. And it seems to work. Let's verify that it's going to work. All right, looks good too. Now, um, uh, I'm just going to do like uh, one little change right here. In the documentation uh, for async, um, they, they call this a callback, but to me it makes like more sense to call it next, um, just because like when we're finished, we call the callback right here, and then it goes to the next element in our collection. So uh, I'm just going to highlight and uh, and press Command D a couple of times in my Atom text editor, and I'm going to replace these uh, three callback words with just next. And I can, I mean, you can call it anything that you want to. To me, it makes more sense to call it next because when we're finished, we're going to go to the next item and we can save it right like that. And I can run it again and uh, yeah, it works all the same. Okay. So the official Node School solution is quite different from ours, so take a look at it. It's really nice and quite clever. Um, and this has been a very long video, so let's stop right here. We covered a lot of stuff in this video. In the next video, if we go back to the terminal, go back to the terminal, Stephen. Okay, we're going to do some more cool web stuff, and we are going to Time Server. Wonderful. This is going to be a lot of fun. So take a break, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Boop.